girl Tiffany Rochelle here the people's cheerleader and I am about to volunteer you to do something <laughs> I know you're probably wondering what am I about to volunteer you for well this is what I need for you to do I need you to like and subscribe to this show and this channel so if you will go ahead and minimize the screen and hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn those notifications on because that's important for you to be able to stay connected with me and the community so like this show subscribe to this channel and make sure you stay tuning in i also need for you to make sure that you share this show with somebody you never know whose life you're going to be impacting by sharing this with someone so show me that sharing is caring in your life and share this show with someone so i'm gonna stop talking right now so we can get to my amazing vip that's here with me on tonight here we grow I see you. <laughs> I see you as well. Yo, how's your day been going? Pretty good. I just finished having dinner, so pretty good. I'm nosy. What'd you eat? I actually made a new recipe. I made shrimp, orzo, and asparagus, and it was so yummy. Oh, stop it. Uh huh. Hey, well, you better go on the <laughs> I at you. Thank you. Yeah. Like, who, who all do you have to cook for? Just myself and my boyfriend. Okay, come on, yeah, and boyfriend. Yeah, okay. but you know it's the perfect mix because I used to want to make recipes, but when I was living, when it was just for me, it was like I couldn't get myself to to do it, you know. And then now I get to do it for the two of us, so I feel more motivated. But again, it's only two people, so it's not that much food to be preparing. I think I just good. Yeah. I understand. Well, that's kind of cute. Talk to me. Tell me more about you because I know you're into relationships. Yes. Don't be yeah. trying to come on here and trying to get me to be in a whole relationship because I still think that they suck. I'm playing with you. <laughs> I'm playing. I swear I'm playing. I'm just playing. What made you get into relationships, sincerely? Uh, just having such a hard time with them, honestly. Um, just not knowing how to create a relationship where I felt like good isn't the right word for it but like where I just wasn't like stressed and tense and confused and resentful angry frustrated fearful like you know all those things you get you get all those feelings when you're in a relationship Girl, I mean I used to now it's gotten a lot a lot better you know because I've, I've like done a you. lot of work on myself but yeah, I'm back starting to get nervous. Day. I'm like, yeah, I'm still gonna stay single. <laughs> it feels like that, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it just uh it wasn't really role modeled to me how to have a healthy relationship. All my role models were mostly women that were minimizing their needs, maybe didn't even know what they were, didn't even express them, and then men that kind of took advantage of that and just kind of did their own thing and expected their wives to sit there and look pretty and say thank you and I did not want to be that um but I didn't know how not to be that I was very much like trained and conditioned to be that and I was like why the hell am I so angry all the time so yeah it makes sense it does. So you think your upbringing kind of made you like a little disgruntled and just angry thinking? Exactly. How did the shift come about? <laughs> like, because you're absolutely right. I, I believe our environment totally plays a part of the makeup of us. So if yeah. I'm always kind of seeing angry individuals, if I'm always seeing individuals that's like really pissed off at you yeah. or you know what, whatever. Yeah. However they decide to communicate, we kind of pick up on that too. So you're like, oh, you know what? Well, that's how she talked to him. He's still there. And sometimes mm -hmm. I hear him chuckle at it. So he must think it's cute. You know, mm -hmm. like, so you see that and seeing that they don't let them have been together for like 15 years, right? So then mm -hmm. that does seem like that's a model. What 
what yeah. made you change? How did the transition come about for you that made you see yeah. turmoil versus bliss? Or is it bliss yet yeah. for you? I'm not going to say that it's perfect bliss because there's still stuff to work through and learn about and we have our things, you know, but I will say, and, and I'll get back to how did I do the transition, but I will say that at least now it's like when things happen or there's a hardship, there's a toolbox of useful tools to go to and refer to. And it's not just like, oh, F. How, what do I do now? You know, um, so that's really good. Um, that I, is. So how did I do the transition? So um, fortunately, not fortunately, but I went through a really horrible experience in high school. And my dad was like, you're going to therapy, whether you like it or not. And I wow. was like, well, I don't want to go to therapy, but, you know, here we are. Um, and then I went to this really cool therapy experience. And I was like, oh, my God, therapy is like magic magic like you can like heal your wounds like it, I was like is this like is this real is this like an alternate universe and it was like California it was in California so it was a little like hippy dippy and I was like this is so cool like you know the whole thing um sorry I'm partial like, west coast me? west coast is the best coast sorry I'm partial I agree I, I'm an east coast girly but I love the I love the the west coast as well um I was raised on the west coast but I live on the east coast now oh okay okay yeah. So then he dragged me to therapy. I did this like therapy boot camp sort of thing. And then two years later, I signed up for individual therapy because I was having some problems. And the therapist was like, okay, I hear you. Why don't you make a list of the things that are stressing you out in your life and write them down in order of priority, most stressful, least stressful, most stressful thing in my life at 20. I think I was 20 when I signed up for this therapy was my relationship with my boyfriend. He's sitting wow. over there in the living room. But that was the most stressful. And y'all so still like, together. We're still together. This was like, how old am I? I'm 28 now. So this was like eight years ago. Wow. Wow. So yeah, so I just started, I started going to therapy. I kept going to therapy. I was also studying to become a therapist. So that, you know, helped. Um, but I was obsessed with it. I was like, oh my God, I found the answers to life. Like everything makes sense now. You know, anxious attachment, um, trauma history, like all the things just finally made sense. So I went a little obsessed there for a while. I, it was like all I would talk about, but it's like, it was like a medicine for me to be able to access all that information and, and apply it and implement it to my life. So therapy did it to you. So your dad's is it fair to say your dad's hate it, love it, or leave it attitude is what made you kind of shift? Yes, 100%. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> it's amazing what a therapist can do because I am 100% on board with therapists. You know, mm -hmm. And I absolutely love it. They definitely changed my life. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that have bad experiences with therapy. I'm mm -hmm. not going to therapy. That's stupid. And whatever. And that's yeah. just not. It, I know it sounded like a guy's voice, but girls sound like that too. <laughs> they do, they do, they do. <laughs> I, I feel like I try to do it twofold because I am the girl, so I'm speaking, yeah. but I just had a deep voice, don't you? <laughs> so, so, but there are a lot of people that have that experience and they're like, I'm not doing therapy because therapy doesn't work. But maybe yeah. just you and that particular therapist didn't work because I definitely exactly. do believe just because we hold the title therapist, you know, or just because you went to yeah. school for X amount of days or years. And I'm saying yeah. days because some people haven't completed, you know, or whatever, and they still <laughs> sure, will sure. attempt to try to say, I'm going to counsel you. Nevertheless, just because that particular one didn't work, that doesn't mean therapy doesn't work, but sometimes mm -hmm. that worldview you're stuck on that and you can't shift your mind from that because you're just like it just doesn't work I tried it and it doesn't work but you're not willing to try something else and you're not really willing to shift your mind to say all right you know what let me go to somebody else Do you, have you yes. ever experienced that is it hard for you to tell somebody like no we don't work out together go on to somebody else <laughs> You know, I've been lucky enough that um, for the most part, I think I've only sent someone away once and it was because she came, she had a lot of issues and it felt like she was using her, 
how do I say this properly? It felt like she was, her issues were like manifesting in our relationship. And the thing is that I wasn't working. I was working as a coach. I wasn't working in like a therapeutic setting. I didn't have like a whole team with me of support on how to manage people like this. So I kind of was like, listen, I think you need more support. I think you need to go to like a proper therapist, like no hard feelings, just, you know, it felt like a very like man- it was starting to become like a manipulative relationship on her end. And I was like, I don't think this is actually beneficial to you right now. Like you're not growing yeah. by trying to manipulate me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but literally, that was just one person in all of these years that I've been doing this. So yeah. I've been very fortunate to work with people that um, for the most part want to grow. And you know what? Sometimes the growth is slow and it's just a matter of being patient with them. Um but, you know, as long as I see progress and I see that someone's trying, then I'm here for it. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're all into relationships and you're just like, hey, I want to make things work. Do you just do the preparing an individual for a relationship or are you more so if the relationship is in turmoil, come to me and let's repair it? That's me. When the relationship is in turmoil, come repair it. Let me tell you, I've been in a relationship since I was 16 years old. I have never dated. I have no idea how to date. Don't ask me what to put on your hinge profile. Don't ask me how many, how many, how many dates you should go on before things are serious. I don't know. Like I, I just, I think I can give you a general sense, but I have no clue so I'm like, let me just stay in my lane. Let me stick to the things that I know, which are you're in turmoil. Let me help you out. You have no idea if you should stay or leave this long-term relationship. Let me help you out. You are in a horrible relationship, but you've been together for 15 years and you're scared to throw that all away. Let me help you out. Like that's my kind of gal. Okay. That makes sense. But that I like, I really have to say, I really respect you for that. And because there's a lot of people that just say I'm under the umbrella of relationships and let's go. And so for me, I'm enjoying being single. I've been married twice. So I'm mm-hmm. not like in, I've been married twice and engaged. Well, a grand total of four times, but two of those resulted in marriage. <laughs> Who mm-hmm. did it? So, yes, I did just give you like nano nano. Okay, I'm I too old. That, that might have been before your time. Nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, no. I know that reference. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> oh, I don't feel old in this moment. I look young, but God darn it, I got a little miles on me. Nevertheless. <laughs> So I appreciate you and respect you all so, so much because again, yeah. people will just go under the skies of the disguise of I'm into relationships and girl, yeah. let me help you get you together. And this is what you should look yes. like. You know, your, your shirt shouldn't show so much cleavage. I get it that, you know, it's mm-hmm. kind of concealed with the strings, but you know, mm-hmm. like, you're not that you're like, Hey, you guys may not work out. Come here. Let me show you what longevity mm-hmm. looks like. Let me show you what mm-hmm. this is. How, let me equip your toolbox. I had to take your words. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and you know, and not just like, it's like, let's create longevity, but let's not force it in the sense, like if this really isn't meant to be, like if you, for example, like I work with some woman that I say, okay, like let's take where you're at. Let's help you learn how to, let's help you figure out what are my needs? How do I express them? How do I set boundaries? You know, how do I do these crucial things that create like a healthy long-term relationship? And if you do all these things and your partner doesn't get on board, maybe let's start thinking about slowly separating from your partner, mm-hmm. like slowly separating. I'm not saying we need to drastically jump to like divorce or break up. Like, no, that's, I don't ever think that's the right solution. I'm like, let's just start to go in a direction and see what happens because some partners get on board and some don't. Right. And like, we got to give them the benefit of the doubt, uh-huh. but also if they don't get on board, it's like, okay, let's safely get you out of that situation Uh um because it's just not fair to either one of you okay so it sounds like you're more so on the the bandwagon of um let's face the issue head on let's talk about it let's get this taken care of and hey what is our problem let's work on it versus just ghosting the person and saying you know what this ain't working out (laughs) and don't talk to them i'm blocking (laughs) your number (laughs) Well, I'm sure you've seen in your experience as well. I find that when people rush to break up without facing the situation, 
what we don't realize, and this is something I had to learn about myself, like what we don't realize is that just because you change partner doesn't mean you're actually going to change problems. Like you can change partner and find yourself in the exact same situation dating a completely different person. And then people are like, wait, what? But I broke up with him. It was his fault. That's why we were unhappy. And I'm like, no, sweetie, no. Like this dynamic, uh-huh. you brought this into uh-huh. the new relationship. You're a magnet to it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I got yeah. uh, What is something that you think that we can do to support um, a loving relationship? Because sure, we get into toxic relationships. Yeah. But if we realize we've had the conversation because you are mm-hmm. into Let's have the conversation, face it head yeah. on. So yeah. since we have faced the situation head on and we realize, okay, we're going to work. We done got the, our box equipped with the right tools mm-hmm. and we know how to kind of like talk about whatever is happening. I don't like you make uh, alphabet soup. I want you to make clam chowder, you know, just whatever. Or I'm yeah. expecting you just to know how I feel because we're exactly. guilty of that. You know, yes. us ladies sometimes are so guilty of yes. saying, I need you. You ain't been together 16 years. You should know that already. No toots. No. I don't know that. I know that no. we've been together for 16 years, but I had no clue that tulips was your favorite flower. Exactly. <laughs> you know? So what is yeah. it that you think we can do or what steps can we take to su- have that supporting relationship we're about to work out? And if you've said, mm-hmm. if I said something you want to interject, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's a, no, no, that's such a great question. Um, I like to say, first of all, always start with self-awareness work because you're caring, like it takes two to tango, right? Like it's such a simple sentence, but if you really, really think about it and unpack it, if it takes two to tango, it's like, what am I doing to create this dynamic? What is my role and responsibility in this dynamic? I always like to say responsibility is not fault, you know, very, two very separate things, Uh but Uh what is my responsibility? Like if I'm dancing with my partner, let's say as a metaphor, and I keep stepping on his foot and I'm not realizing it, yeah, he's going to get upset and he's going to react. And then I can't act like, oh, I don't get why my partner is mistreating me. Well, sweetie, you keep stepping on his foot. Like, obviously he's going to be upset. Like, that's just a natural human response. It hurt. It hurt him. (laughs) But I think it's like we kind of, it's hard for us to put a mirror up to ourselves and our behaviors and thought patterns and belief systems. It's hard. It's uncomfortable. So I always say, I'm like, build self-awareness and get a lot of support around you like get your girlies around you get your friends around you get yourself a coach a therapist everyone get yourself like go to church like go everywhere like to get support (laughs) because this is really hard work get everything get the the issue get the get a whole bunch of everything get all of it Exactly. That's funny though, but I have I, that was funny. <laughs> get everything that you can get, but that does make sense though because you need a support yeah. system. Yes. Now tell me, how do you? Because sometimes our girlfriends, because I did hear you say, get your girlfriends, get it there. Yeah. Because I totally believe you. We need yeah. a support system. But yeah. how do you? How do you navigate when your homegirls aren't the healthiest for you? Like they're mm. in toxic relationships too. Mm-hmm. Or you know what? Me and Jimmy, I love him. He had a little snafu, you know, mm-hmm. okay, he played around with the money a little bit mm-hmm. and I couldn't buy my shoes. I'm really magnifying it, you know, mm-hmm. that oh, he's mismanaging money because I couldn't buy my shoes. It really wasn't, you know, mismanagement. We're trying to save to buy a house and I want to shoot like little stuff, but we talk to our homegirls mm-hmm. and we tell them that. And now me and Jimmy, there is no Jimmy for the record. <laughs> but and me and Jimmy, we done reconciled, but my homegirls are still finding fault yeah. in him. And yeah. now they're wanting us to break up, but we reconciled. You know, I've forgiven him because there's a difference between forgiving and reconciliation, mm-hmm. but we've done both and we're staying mm-hmm. together. How mm-hmm. do you navigate negative girlfriends that were like, I can't give you that real finger? But. <laughs> mm-hmm. that's such a good point I relate to that so much so I used to be the kind of person that was just always sharing the negative always making myself look like the absolute victim in the situation and so rightly so my friends and family were like why are you still like in this you know like he's clearly not you know all the things 
And, and then I was like, no, 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 but I love him. But you know, he does all, you know, but no, I, I promise there's a reason, you know? So, um, I had to learn that, um, yes, some of the people in my life were not good at being supportive, even though they looked like they were supporting me, it actually wasn't supportive. And I also had to learn that I needed to be a lot more mindful and intentional about who I shared with what I shared. I mean, I got lucky. So since I went to graduate school to become a therapist, all my best friends are therapists. So like, it's actually really good advice that I'm getting, you know, like, I don't like you. I just thought I'd tell you that. So I'm telling you that even though I'm looking to the side, I'm telling you to your face, I am jealous of you. I just want you to know that. I recommend getting yourself some, th- I get recommend everyone get Drink therapist friends. <laughs> don't abuse of them. You know, you need to reciprocate the therapist friend. You can't abuse of the therapist friend, but get yourself a therapist friend because their advice is way better than like your friend who's in like a toxic relationship advice. Her advice isn't going to be good. Right. right. Um, yeah, I think it's just, I actually just put up a post about this yesterday. It was like, you go to your friends, you're upset about a situation and their first response is like, oh my God, he's not treating you right. You need to break up with him. Yeah. That's the type of person that you want to be maybe a little bit more careful about who you share your stuff with Mm -hmm. because if someone is automatically telling you what to do telling you what you how you should handle your relationship telling you how you should feel and how you should behave that's not actually supportive right that's just someone bossing you around Mm -hmm. and that's not maybe in the moment you feel better because you got advice and you maybe can implement that advice. I was never able to implement any advice that my friends would give me like that. So I thought I was, something was wrong with me. So that's why I went to therapy because I couldn't implement my friend's advice. But um, it's just like, they're not like, that's just not going to be something long-term that you're going to be able to sustain always having to go to someone to tell you what to do. You need to figure out what you need to do because only you know what's right for your relationship no one else does not even your therapist yeah makes sense because the choice ultimately is yours is if you're going to stay or you're going to go should I stay or should I go (laughs) exactly I'm going to quit I'm not but (laughs) whatever so ultimately the decision is yours and yes I appreciate you know gleaning from some of your wisdom but if it's wisdom don't give me your toxicity you know and don't give me (laughs) your pissed off at him you know like seriously you should asking questions but that that is that's smart get you some therapist friends so now (laughs) I feel like I need to go go back into my Rolodex and see what friends I can go <laughs> your friends, yeah. mm-hmm. Let me go see if I can go give me some free help but you're right don't abuse it because don't you know what it. they're your friends overall mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. they just happen to be in that field but don't exactly. abuse that because we all go through stuff you know yeah. we all bleed we all shop at the same grocery stores you know yeah. so it's like we all have our own situations and we're friends don't try to go take advantage of me because of my position Exactly. Whatever. I'm going to be here for you regardless, but whatever. (laughs) So tell me this, what's more important to you? What do you think is being heard or being understood? Like I'll say, Hey, you know what? Listen, you're going to hate it, love it or leave it. You know, I don't care. I want you to go clean up the dishes, go clean up the laundry or Hey honey, I can still say, go clean up the dishes, go do the laundry. But my tone and texture has kind of like changed. Is it more important for you to make sure that your spouse understands you or mm-hmm. you just being hurt? Mm-hmm. That's such a good question. I had to like take a deep breath and check in with my body to hear the response. Cause I was like, Whoa, I have no idea. Um, I think understood. Sorry. No, you're so good. I love that question. Um, I think for me, it's understood because for me being understood means feeling accepted. It means not feeling especially when it's something that maybe I have any sort of shame around being understood is like the medicine to that. And yeah, it just helps you feel like normal. Um, and, and feel like you're not like a weirdo, you know? So that's always like a good, a good thing. It is. I'm, I'm with you. I love you. I want you to understand how I feel. Cause I think once you understand me, you're bad you'll have a better uh, understanding <laughs> of mm-hmm. what it is I need, want, and desire. So exactly. if you just hear what I'm saying, you're still, you might be have doing, 
doing it with an attitude and whatever if I'm asking something of you mm-hmm. I actually would like for you to want to do it or even if you don't want to do it, it's like hey just respect my boundaries mm-hmm. I don't want to do that and mm-hmm. I'm going to understand you versus exactly. you know hey if you understand I don't I a pet peeve of mine don't walk around my house with no socks on or no shoes always have socks or shoes on mm. it's a thing for me I got hardwood floors mm-hmm. it's a thing I don't like the, the sound of it just <laughs> it just wears me thin here in just <laughs> naked feet on the ground <laughs> but if you come over to my house because you're comfortable just taking off your shoes yeah and now all of a sudden you come over to my house hey, God. and then I hear that on the floor <laughs> got a whole different attitude now so I'm so excited to see you but I'm like girl yeah but if I don't express to you what's Mm -hmm. going on with me or hey I have this thing put some socks on put some shoes Mm -hmm. on or when I get to the you get to the door and there are socks ready for you you kind of understand because I've explained to you what's going on versus me just having an attitude and you seeing Tiffany you know you were happy when I came in here and now all of a sudden you just exactly (laughs) Totally. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that like, for example, if I was a friend of yours and and you, you know, said that to me, if there's an explanation with it, then I'm probably so much more willing to meet your need, you know, whatever it is, because I get that it's not just like some random thing. Like it's something that's important to you. I remember when I got, when I started to get better at expressing my needs, wasn't quite excellent at it yet but starting to get it my partner started meeting my needs way more and I was like wait the heck like what what's changed you know like why you know and he's like well I finally understood that that thing that you kept on complaining about was just something that you wanted and that you needed and I was like oh yeah that's true (laughs) that you understood it sooner than I did I didn't even fully understand it um but it's complicated because even if we know what we need like even I love that you shared that example because it's like such a silly little you know kind of thing like it's in the grand scheme of life right like it's a small little thing you know so but if it's important to you and you value it and you respect that it's important to you you're more likely to make it a point and make sure that everyone follows this rule of yours whereas um where where a lot of women are at and where I was coming from is that even though I knew what I wanted it's like I was like ashamed of it or I felt guilty about it and so I wasn't willing to clearly express it and ask for it so it's like how is my partner supposed to understand what I'm needing when I haven't even clearly elaborated it to them they have to like read they have to play like mind games to like understand you know game of tetris oh my goodness (laughs) wait for something to disappear (laughs) oh that's what it is that's what it is yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that that took time for me to get there though because Mm -hmm. i absolutely agree with the the fact of kind of being scared and fearful Mm because for me i don't want nobody to think i'm a weirdo when you come over to my house and i want you to put on shoes because it just does something to me and it's Mm -hmm. nothing that's bad derogatory or anything just I just don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the sound would just drive me nuts. But it took me a little while to say, you know what? Hey, this is my space. Why am I about to be uncomfortable in my space? I want you here. But in order for you to be here and for me to be present while you're here, mm-hmm. I have to express how I feel. Because mm-hmm. if I don't, your presence being here, which is a great present, it's a great gift for me. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm not able to appreciate that because yeah. I'm giving you attitude that I won't verbally say, you just <laughs> feel it. So yeah. Yeah. instead of going through that, let me express to you, hey, guess exactly. what? If you do that, and more likely than not, they might be like, well, hey, I don't see any shoes around. So I just took my shoes off because it just looks so clean around here. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah. But, yeah Russian hill. <laughs> and sometimes it's really just about like giving ourselves the permission to 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 ask for what we want and and make it known to others I'll tell you half of the time I feel like my clients sign on with me we get on zoom you know we do the thing how's it going whatever 
what's going on and they tell me the whole thing they tell me what's going on they tell me how they want to handle it and they're like what do you think and I'm like yeah go ahead like do it like you know, I'm like why are you I'm like is that the that's the that's they're like oh okay I wasn't sure and I'm like yes go for it like you were you already did the whole thing yourself like you just paid me you know x amount of dollars just for me to say good oh. go for it you know but sometimes we have such deep insecurities that we need someone else to just be like you're that good go ahead you're doing the right thing mm-hmm. yeah that reassurance works I absolutely love it tell me this what's something that you would love to leave with the audience Mm, that everyone deserves to have a relationship where they truly feel that there is a strong, solid foundation of trust and respect. Mm -hmm. That when you, when you, you know, when you're like in a long-term relationship, you're like, oh, we've been together for 20 years or 10 years or 12 years, whatever. It's like, I want those 12 20 years not to be perfect because that's not possible but let's make them not just quantity but like quality that's big Mm -hmm. oh that makes sense i like it you're amazing you're amazing thank Thank you for stopping by and talking to my lovers and friends and so we shall be talking soon huh hey y'all it's tiffany rochelle here and i have a few offers just for you the first one is my book and it's called i choose me Now, I have had to fight in some type of way or another, but the best fight that I fought is the battle of me, the old me versus the emerging me. Now, the old me always threw some good punches, but the emerging me knew how to stick and move because I learned the art of endurance. Try to hold hate with love, and you tell me who is strong. The second offer is a workbook I have called Gold Digger. Now, there are about 47 activities that we will go through so that you will be able to crush some of your goals for your life. You purchasing this book is one of the first of many steps to bettering your life. Lastly, I have a course on forgiveness. Forgiveness isn't just a nice thing to do. It can also be a powerful tool to bring marvelous change in your life. In this course, you'll learn how to effectively use the skills of forgiveness to help you lead a more peaceful and satisfying life. So today, unleash the power of forgiveness to create a more meaningful life. Next, I want you to learn that it is okay for you to choose you. And lastly, develop a mindset to see and crush some of your goals. Looking so forward to growing with you. I'm excited for you and your growth. Grace and peace.